Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. Um, this is the video footage that I shot of Jupiter last night turning blue for the second time. Um, we'll get into that as the clip starts up here. Uh, I posted my first kind of article on the examiner that's not so middle of the road. It's about chemtrails. We'll see what the reaction to that is. There are very few news articles uh, that use that word even. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, please use the link in the description of this video and subscribe to the author and I will alert you when I post new clips. Alright, so I went back and looked and interestingly enough, the first time that I shot the stills of Jupiter turning blue was in January of 2014. So here we are in January of 2015 and I shot video of this. Um, it's kind of a fluke the way it happened back in 2014 because I had shot the images and I thought it was interesting to say the least but I wasn't going to post it but then a user um, commented on the channel and said that he had taken an image of Jupiter and seen this it turned out that the image wasn't usable or really recognizable but he claims that he saw through the eyepiece Jupiter turning blue which is why I posted the first video so fast forward to just about a year later um, here we go and uh, there's me leaving the moon because it's late at night, almost midnight, and I swing over and acquire Jupiter. And the first thing I notice is it looks a little blue. And you'll see as it comes into frame here, I adjust. Everything's on manual, by the way, both times. Uh, I'm knocking my f-stop up to let as much light in as I can um, to get the view that you see here. And it has a definite blue tinge to it. So... I get ready to focus and uh, get all my manual settings and this is where I'm at. Um, Jupiter looks pretty much normal as it should look here. This is normal speed. It's the only clip that I'll run normal speed but watch it's already turning blue right in front of your eyes. So what I did was in a few of the clips I jacked the f-stop all the way until there was just a black frame and then I jacked it back up to see if that had any effect and it did not. I turned off the camera which is actually what just happened right there when I reacquired this and set up and got that better image. Um, turned off the camera, turned it on to see if that had an effect. It did not. Um, one time I turned it off while it was blue. When I turned it back on, it was blue. And one time I turned it off when it was looking pretty normal. And when I turned back on, it was looking pretty normal. So this is at 500% speed because uh, these clips were a bit long. So you can see what it looks like um, sped up as it turns blue. And I'm doing this because I'm pretty sure everyone doesn't want to sit here and watch, I don't know, what it would end up being 20-some minutes of Jupiter video, which could be pretty boring. So there it was, and it's backing off blue here a little bit. And then this next clip is going to run at 1,000%. And you'll see what happens here. There's the blue tinge. And there it goes, back to what we expect Jupiter to look like. Now I should mention, uh, in the 2014 footage, I was using a Canon and a Mead telescope. The Canon was all manual settings, but that camera has more sensitive color settings than the Nikon I use now. There it goes turning blue. This time when I filmed, I'm using a Nikon and a Celestron, so all the equipment is completely different. There is no piece of the equipment that is the same in these two filmings, which is why I think this is very interesting. Um, I'm not sure what it means. This clip was an 8 minute clip that I sped up to 2000% so you can just get a decent view of the color change. And there it goes. You know, obviously at 2000% this is happening much quicker and there it goes back to normal again um, than if I ran it at normal speed. So bear in mind that's why I put the speeds of these clips up so that you understand that the color change you're seeing except in the first clip is much quicker than it is actually occurring. And so this was the final clip of the night, and I ran for quite a while, um, and it never turned blue again. It stayed kind of this. But the funny thing is, is there is a tinge of blue at the edge, and here for a second we'll look at the, the stills that I took in 2014. Um, with the Canon camera, the color settings are a bit more in your face. The Nikon is much more subtle. But what you see here is manual settings you know so we're not looking at auto lighting or anything like that and you can see these numbered frames happen one after the other with the times uh, and on one occasion you know this first occasion you can see I got this kinda pale blue one 
but in the next one you see where it went fully really blue my guess is is that the color being a little more in your face on the cannon is that these very blue looking ones are pry in reality a bit closer to what you have just seen with the nikon footage um, in other words i think the nikon's color is a bit truer to real life it's a much better camera and uh, actually if you jack the color settings up on the nikon you still don't get garish color um, that you can get out of the Nikon. So when I took all these stills, what I was doing is taking 200 images so I could do a manual stack. So I don't know how many images is stacked in this Jupiter picture, but you can even see in this, the edge has a blue glow to it. So people are going to ask me what this means. I'm not sure how to answer that, but this was two separate systems that saw Jupiter turning blue. Let's see if someone else catches it before we take the conversation further. So there it is. Cheers. Join me on the exam.